Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for checking out an episode of Liberty Mastermind Podcast. This is going to be episode number 39. We had a request from our Discord audience for joining a volunteer agency. So we're going to talk a little bit about the process of joining it. We're going to talk about different types of agencies. We're going to talk about uh, whatever the audience can give us tonight, because if you're on our Discord app, you'll be able to hear us and interact with us live while we record. So we're going to go over some of that. And we're going to get started. Here we go. So tonight it's me, uh, me, Pat, and I got my buddy, Texas Joe. How you doing, Joe? Doing great. Doing great. Um, we usually have been forgetting kind of on and off. So let's, let's, let's do this right this time. I am recording with my just one or two servings in my sweet little Yeti tumbler of Vikings blood. I'm so happy. What do you got over there? Um, I'm doing a tour tonight. I'm uh, drinking Viking's blood from the bottle. Mm. Good. Mm. Hold on. I'm also uh, drinking Bud Light Platinum. Mm-hmm. Which is, that's a new one on me. And uh, the Shiner prickly pears back out for this season. I, so. have not, I have not had that one yet. So next time I visit, get a couple of those for me. Hell yeah. Which hopefully will be soon. It damn well, better be soon. Uh, let me give one quick piece of housekeeping. Uh, and then we're going to jump right into the topic because, and trust me, this you, won't you take better long. because I don't like it when people start a, a, a podcast episode and then spend like 35 minutes talking shit. It will take less than three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, let's go. So, a guy named Carl with a K sent me an email recently for feedback on Uncensored Tactical, and I'm a host on both of these platforms, as is Texas Joe and the other two hosts. Ox and Jack. So Carl sends me an email for some feedback. He says, Hey, I love the website and the podcast. Keep up the great work. And he asked us what model Glock me and our co-hosts shoot says he wants to send us a little care package. So I responded to his email address and either it was spelled wrong or there is some sort of error on my end or his end. Uh, technologically wise. Well, that's probably the wrong word for that sentence. Uh, so there was some type of error in communications. So I emailed him back. I double checked the address and the address doesn't work. So if Carl is out there and listening to this, I'll also do a shout out on uncensored tactical. Um, Mm -hmm. if you're on either of these platforms and you hear me, Carl, shoot me another email, um, via the contact form or just email me direct at uncensored tactical at gmail.com. And I will be glad to get back to you. And thanks so much for the feedback. So that's the end of my housekeeping. I'm ready to get into the content. Okay, so I'm clear on this. What was the context of the question about joining a volunteer organization? Um, I think someone wanted to, I think the context was how you join a volunteer organization and what the process would be, like the hiring process and things like that, which I can speak to being hired at agencies quite a bit. Um, I don't know if it'll be much different for a volunteer agency, but I think we can also talk about the differences between a volunteer agency and a paid agency which I think you and I can probably hash out pretty good as well as some of our listeners. I think at beer cop said he's worked for several different volunteer agencies. Okay. I know that, um, I'm a member of a private group and then a couple of public ish groups. Well, one is actually funded, you know, it's a, it's a detachment of the County, I guess, County fire is, you know, I guess mm-hmm. how we're classified. Um, so anyway, where do you want to start? Let's start with the hiring process. So um, I'm going to do a quick shout out here. What is the hiring process like for volunteer agency jobs? This is Gorilla Live Podcasting. Very little editing, so you'll hear me typing in the background. 
So I just asked our Discord audience to weigh in on that topic. Um, I had, let's see, I have an article on Uncensored Tactical for the hiring process and why you're being lied to by agencies. Um, I will put a link. First link note, link. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to fill our first question. Um, Oscar Del Tequilo asks, what is a private fire company um, like one for a business or a school? Um, I'm actually not at this time part of a um, uh, a fire I guess a firehouse or, you know, a, a, a firefighting team or, you know, a, a particular station or a company. Um, I'm actually a volunteer for a search and rescue company. And because of them not knowing exactly how to classify us or who to attach us to, be it the sheriff's department for the county or the county fire, you know, um, we are... I guess classified as part of the fire department. So um, we operate autonomously, um, but you know we're able to hear and you know go out on calls for both the fire department and the um, you know the sheriff's department. So, all right. Anybody hey. else got any questions? Hey Joe, I got a question. Do you know how the funding works for? A volunteer agency like that if it's not if it's not managed by a municipality um is it like i mean are you are you billing people for your services or is it funded through some type of grant or something like that or is it okay, also so do you know anything about that um, well yes and the what i'm my answer is yes um it, it you know it really depends um we have um, some of our self-funding, you know, we'll do um, community outreach and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. We'll do barbecues, we'll do benefits, we'll do, you know, silent auctions, stuff like that. Um, we do rely a lot on donations. Um, we have actually just received a huge donation from the, uh, oh man, um, the Montgomery County Jeep Association. Okay. So, um, that was, you know, something really big. They did a, um, a poker run and man, there was just tons of Jeeps out, man. Um, so we, we got, we got a huge donation from them for that event. Um, we will, um, we'll get funding from, you know, sponsors and stuff. Um, uh, I know we had somebody either work for Shell or DuPont or something like that, maybe even Chevron and, the employees of that company would turn in how much time they volunteered throughout the year. And then those companies would cut us a check based on their hourly rate that they make as an employee for the company. Oh, cool. Um, so we do other stuff now to buy, you know, our, you know, boats and equipment and stuff like that. We do actively, we have somebody on the team that all they do is handle grants. So they know how to write them. They know how to, you know, write the requests and the mm -hmm. petitions and, you know, all that stuff. So we have, you know, been lucky. We've got, you know, like, uh, we got, we got some boats, we got trailers, we got side imaging sonar. We got, you know, tons of really good stuff. Um, my search and rescue team or my search and rescue squad, um, we have drone pilots, we have search dogs, we have divers, we have boat operators, we have, you know, ground pounders, we have a horse team, we have an ATV team. So it's, it's an, you know, it's a collection of several different um, talent pools and some of them overlap. So. Which is good. So am I leaving anything out? That sounds good. I, I like that a lot. That was very informative. Uh, we did say we were going to talk about the hiring process mm -hmm. for a volunteer agency. So I'll do a quick, I don't know, two or three minutes on the hiring process for an agency, whether it's volunteer or not. I don't know if it's going to be much different. Um, I can tell you there's different phases and there's different benchmarks along the way for most things that are managed by a municipality, whether it's a city or a county or a state um, agency, whether it's fire, police, doesn't matter. They're all very similar in the government. 
Um, you very often have your background investigation, and sometimes you will meet with a background investigator before, during, and or after the investigation happens. Um, or you might not meet with them at all. They might do it without speaking to you. So there's your, your written and paper application that you turn in, and that's often what your background application starts from. And the background investigator will go through that thing. He'll check to make sure it's accurate. He'll call all your references. He'll double check your addresses, double check your employment history. Um, they'll check your credit score. They'll see if you're wanted for any warrants. They'll see what your criminal and driving history are. And that's basically, that's about it. Um, there is your often some type of interview, whether it's with one person or with 10 people and whether it's formal or informal, there's often an interview. And I think, I think we talked about interviews, but if we haven't, um, I can go much deeper on just the oral board interview itself, and we can talk for maybe an hour or, or much more on that. Um, depending on your agency, there may or may not be some sort of physical test. I, I guess in most first responder type jobs, there's going to be some type of physical test. Um, do you have any any comments about that, Joe? Um, I, I I do want to point out, or you know. I guess parallel what you've said so far with your application mm -hmm. um, for volunteer, at least for, for my volunteer duties. Um, we've had to have, you know, a, a background check. We've had to have um, the application. Um, we definitely get, you know, references, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, do, were you asked for a list of, I guess, uh, skills, special skills, talent, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. If you're, if you're, I, uh, it's very rarely on, on agency applications, but that sounds like a really smart thing to do for a volunteer agency. Let's talk more about that. Okay. So one of the things that they wanted to know is, you know, what kind of uh, upfront because it's a volunteer, you know, agency, uh, or a volunteer group. Um, they want to know what assets you can bring to the table, right? So if you have um, horses, obviously it's kind of obligatory that if you have horses, you have the trucks and trailers to transport horses. So, you know, they, they want to know about that. They want to know if you have boats, if you have ATVs, what, what assets you can bring to the table to help the cause. Um, one of the things that they are specifically interested in is, are you a ham radio operator or not? Because when we're out in the field, mm -hmm. a lot of our comms rely on ham radio. Um, see, so comms, um, being able to, or being comfortable in an environment that may be wet, maybe hot, maybe, you know, mosquitoes, maybe, you know, dense, thick brush, uh, you know, if, if you're comfortable working in environments that would make, I guess, I, I hate saying make normal people because I feel like I'm normal, you know, like people that don't spend any time outdoors and in the woods and stuff like that, like that's, it's not normal to me. So to say that it makes somebody like that, like, you know, normal feel uncomfortable, you know, but I, I think you get the point I'm trying to make. Um, so, you know, they, they want to know if you have outdoor skills, if you had, you know, woodsman skills, if you have, you know, first aid, CPR skills, stuff like that. Um, big things are, you know, like EMT, fire, previous rescue experience, divers experience, um, you know, dog handlers are a big one. Uh, so they, they petition you for that. One of the other things that we had to do was we had to go through um, several FEMA modules so that we oh, understood. God. Yeah, okay. Yes, well. Pretty familiar with that. It, <laughs> right. So the reason they made us go through the FEMA modules is so that we understand command structure an organization, you know, for command structure in the field, because mm -hmm. we don't get that, you know, when we're not in, you know, the military or, you know, police or, you know, whatever. So, um, that training was, I guess, a prerequisite or something that they, they required. Um, I think I'm getting off in the weeds. That's here, cool. So Cause I'll throw in a side comment here to help. I have yeah. been through probably easily over a hundred hours of, FEMA death by PowerPoint training. And yeah. I have just stacks of paperwork for all the different FEMA modules that I'm qualified and requalified in. And I don't know a fucking thing about their command structure. 
<laughs> if my life right run a line and they were like, there's a big FEMA emergency, we need your help. And like in my brain, if that little think bubble pops up and they were like, A, B, C, D, like which one? You do or do not respond to which of the following areas? Like the command tent, don't respond until called, wait at home, or start taking action. I'd be like, uh, do you know? Don't know. Don't care. Don't know. Seen it a thousand times, still don't understand it. But, you know, I guess that's a PowerPoint issue more than anything right. else. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, did you find out and approach the agency or did the agency find and approach you? I'm sorry, are you asking me? Yes. Which agency? What do you mean? Well, you obviously, right, you were, you know, Coast Guard, you were mm -hmm. um, a sheriff's deputy. Mm -hmm. You sought out joining those groups, yeah. yes? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, yes, I did my own research and it's, it's very rare for someone to be a individual scout for any type of agency like that. Mm -hmm. um, there are people that do outreach programs, like they go to a school or they go to, an, to a uh, police academy while students are, if you're not sponsored for the academy, if you're just paying your own way, sometimes agencies will send a person just to tell you that they're hiring. But there's no, like in the state that I work, there's no like, hey, we want you. That doesn't happen. Right. Okay, so with me... Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I went through and some, some of the, some of the dudes on the uh, thread are probably going to make fun of this or whatever. But anyway, uh, my wife and I were uh, founding members of a community cert, you know, community emergency response team. Mm -hmm. So, um, in it's, I think it's an eight or nine week module or eight or nine week course. It's, uh, I think once or twice, one, once a week. Um, but it was taught by the Office of Emergency Management for the county. Um, we, you know, basically it was just, you know, a day was just, you know, domestic terrorism. A day was just, you know, localized uh, weather events. A day was, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so one of the days was search and rescue. And so my search and rescue team that I'm a part of now came and showed us how to clear buildings showed us how to mm -hmm. you know do body drags and pulls and stuff like that and lifts and their professionalism when they showed up you know they all had on matching you know polos they you know they they conducted themselves professionally and i said you know what the cert thing is pretty awesome you know i, I feel like you know it's making an impact in my community cool but whatever they're a part of i want it on that so I, you know, they said, Hey, look, we're always taking new members, you know, come check this out. So I went and, you know, figured out how to be a part of that. I started picking people's brains and said, how do I become a member? What, you know, what are y'all looking for talent wise, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I don't remember where, where I was going with that. I'm trying to read y'all's comments on the thread as I'm talking. Uh, what, uh, what kind of, I guess let me cover as a volunteer, we're not necessarily compensated. Okay. And mm -hmm. so this is, you know, something that's kind of cool with, with my search and rescue team. Um, once you're a member and we have, you know, obviously prerequisites for becoming a member, um, you have to have uh, your application, you have to have background check, you have to do your NIM stuff, you have to um, have references, you have to have uh, somebody basically sponsor you. You know, so you have to have a buddy oh, within cool. the organization, um, a character reference or character witness. You know, mm -hmm. um, you have you you have a a minimum membership meeting attendance requirement before you can petition the group to be voted in as a member. That's um, pretty interesting. I did not yeah. expect that. Yeah. So they want you to have some kind of vested interest, and in, you know, beyond. Just, oh, hey, you know, look at me. I'm part of this team. Da, 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 da. Um, so once you are a member, right, once you've gone through all that stuff, you've been voted in and accepted and everything, um, we can take various different specialized training, you know, like we, we can seek it out. So we can do high angle rescue. We can do swift water rescue. Um, 
we can do, you know, stuff to get certified, you know, for operating helicopters, even though we don't have any air. Uh, we can do waterborne searching. We diver, uh, we can, you know, get our dog certified. We can become certified dog handlers, drone pilots, um, equine team. So if you want to take some sort of special training with, uh, with horses or, you know, some kind of, um, like, a I guess like horseback riding is different than, you know, trail riding, right? So if you wanted yeah. to take a trail course, you know, for a horse and rider, you could do that. Um, so once you're a full fledged member, you can take any of these specialized training. You go through the training, get your certification or your certificate of completion, and you give the secretary uh, a copy of your certificate of completion and Search and my search and rescue company will cut you a check on the spot to reimburse you any expenses that you're out. So we're not paid, but you know, it, it is well worth your time to go get certified because at, by the time you get certified or you get a certificate certificate of completion, it's free. So, uh, do you know anything, Joe, about volunteer agencies that? that do pay you? I know you said earlier there was a private ag agency that you would submit your volunteer time to the company kind of in lieu of right. work. Do you know anything about, so, like I know that for, for, for example in New Jersey there's a, like it's really, really, really common to say oh, I work for the volunteer fire department. Like that's almost all they have is volunteer. But I also know right. some of them get paid somehow. Do you know anything about that other than what you already talked about? I don't. And what I mentioned earlier was um, we had a couple of people that were employed by a like a major chemical or major you know petrochemical company, mm -hmm. and they had as part of their you know community outreach program stuff like that for the for that that manufacturer, um, their you know engineers or you know some of their employees would go out and volunteer they had so they, they, they set a quota they're like oh we want to do ten thousand volunteer hours this year you know so you have people they go and build houses for um uh what it was the uh homes for humanity uh habitat for humanity the habitat for build humanity. Them thank you um you have people that will volunteer at soup kitchens a little volunteer at home and stuff like that mm -hmm. so they put this pool out and they're like hey we want to hit this that way we could you know the company can say well we've you know put 10,000 hours of volunteer service into our local community and stuff well with the search and rescue the members that were employees of that large company they would go back to their company with you know a roster and they'd say hey look on this day I did this many hours on this day I did this many hours etc cetera, etc cetera. The company would take that that roster and take the pay rate they earned as employees and actually total up the amount of hours they volunteered and they would actually write a check to our search and rescue outfit for that money. So there, it, it was like they were paying us for their time. That's a really you know, cool workaround. Time and then like that. donating that money to us. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's actually a really good example. I, I like that. So that you know, it's they're getting two goody you know goody stars at that point, or they're you know they're getting two check marks on their box. They're they're donating money and they're donating time at that point. I got to be honest, man. So since leaving the the local law enforcement agency, like part of me, I, I heard about a recent um opening for a civilian position to be a training manager for a local agency kind of near where I live. I thought about taking it. Um, I'm going to probably get a little more information. Uh, the nice thing is I know that I don't need that job and I'm not like super duper 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 excited, but I'd be interested in it. So it's, it's nice to have like a low stress job interview to not be desperate to <laughs> want to get that job. Um, so I might look at a little information about that, but I'm also like while I was on shift, I would always tell my buddies, like my dream job is to make enough money somehow doing something else and to be like an unpaid 
like one or two or three days a month law enforcement officer. Like that would just make me so much happier knowing that I work when I want and I don't, when I don't, I don't work too much. And I also have nothing riding on my job. So like if I quit spur of the moment, it's not like I'm losing any benefits. If I decide to not take a call, the worst that can happen is I am no longer a volunteer. So like I always thought that would be so much nicer to not be stuck in the, well, I've been doing this for 19 years. I better do what the boss says. I don't want to risk my retirement, you know, in that position or in the got to feed my kids position because my kids are fed another way. So just a side note rant, I've been considering maybe doing like an infrequent volunteer law enforcement officer job somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Null, who actually just posted the comment. Mm-hmm. Um, why not look at doing like a reserve Leo yeah. position? Yeah, I was, I'm thinking about it, but I also, I have to find the right agency because in my state, they're all, all, all the different agencies work that differently. Some agencies only hire prior Leos from their agency only to be reserve officers and some hire anybody and some like some have like some reserve officers can only do certain things like transport prisoners and other agencies are like you can do everything a cop does but you don't get paid and some of them are like you can do everything a cop does but you have to work x amount of days x amount of times a month like so it's all varied across the board so i'm just i'm in no rush to kind of get into something that i'm not fully enjoying See, my local police departments and sheriff's departments and constables and stuff like that, um, they range from one to two shifts a week mm-hmm. to, I think, I heard almost like two or three times a month. Um, but you, you're obviously, you're not compensated. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, like a reserve yeah. position and then the words um, reserve and the words part-time are also get a little mixed up too right uh, but the thing about it is in at least when i was talking to these local agencies you are properly considered a cop mm-hmm. like you're badged you 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 take t coal you take you know and i don't know what t coal in in other states i know in texas it's called t coal um but you know, it's you're you're a badged police officer mm-hmm. with yeah, most... every you know all the responsibility, all the you know good and the crap that comes with that. So, um, just the way I'm wired, I've been inclined to do that. I just haven't done it yet. So I tell you what, I man, just... it's enlightening. Uh, yeah, my thing is right. Is like I don't care about the money. I have a job. I mm-hmm. want to make a difference. That's great. I want to help, you know, like I want to be a positive impact on my community. So I don't know that that's the best way, but it's a way. It is. I was just going to say it. It's a way. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, it's a hell of a lot better than, you know, sitting on my ass talking about it. Yeah. And so we, we listen to Gary V quite a bit too. And he says, uh, Fuck yeah. like, I know that there's some people that are like, I don't have time for that. Like, if you log all the hours you sit around playing Xbox or PlayStation, or if you log all the hours that you're like, well, I could just nap Saturday and Sunday, or I can just drink by myself on the back porch this weekend, like, all those hours, if you wanted to do something, like, if you had a passion for it, you can find time for it. And, you know, when it comes to side hustle stuff, it's, you know, 9 to 5 pays the bills, and then you're 5 to 9 is what, like, you're, like that guy on Side Hustle Show, that's his kind of, his catch line. Your 9, your 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. is, like, what drives you. Like, that's your fun time. That's what you live for. Yeah. So, people that want to be reserve, whether vol- volunteer, reserve, part-time, whatever you want to call it, um, I tell people all the time, you're going to regret not trying it, so go fucking try it. And if you work, if you work one shift and you're like, no way, I hate it you will always know that you did it and you tried it. So if you're thinking about joining a volunteer agency, I don't see any negatives to at least trying to get your foot in the door and going to talk to some people. And maybe even if you don't make it through training, at least you get to learn what the training's like. Um, anything else for a, for volunteer agency, for getting hired or starting work or anything like that that you can think of we haven't covered yet? 
Um, not that I can think of. Um, I was just going to throw this out because my two co-hosts, right? Um, well, hold on. We, we got a question from Mark one, which I want to fill. Yeah. I wanted to throw this out there. I'm actually torn because Great. one of my co-hosts is retired military. Um, and I guess now retired police officer. Well, is that right? no, retired, not, not retired is not the best word, but yeah, former, former, former military, standing former, with both. Yeah, former military, former police, mm -hmm. and then I have my other co-host is an EMT. Yeah, uh, rescue and EMT, right for Jack? Res rescue and EMT. Mm -hmm. So I'm torn, right? Do I want to do the police, you know, reserve police officer, or do I want to do EMT? Because I can actually go to the local college system get my EMT certification and get 100% reimbursed by search and rescue for that if I choose. So it's like, mm, I mean, uh, what do I want to do, you know? So anyway, moving on, uh, we have a question from, and I'm sure we got some other ones here down lower in the thread. Yeah. Did um, you see the one from uh, Mark? Marked one? I did. Okay. I did. That's one I'm about to get okay, into. Okay, let's do that. All right, so what is the cost to volunteering, i.e. batteries, flashlights, gas, time off work annually? Um, honestly, I, I love volunteering for search and rescue, so I don't give a shit what it costs. <laughs> um, it's an excuse to buy new gear. Um, I have three or four pairs of boots floating around. Um, I know that I've got one pair of boots that just stays in the back of my car and they're probably 60, 80 bucks. Um, I'm always testing a new radio. I'm always testing a new um, piece of like, you know, like a new helmet or um, a new action camera attached to the side of my helmet or gloves or, you know, some shite like that. Um, this is a really good question. I... I'm really bad at tracking expenses like that because I just like to buy and play with shit. <laughs> I can tell you, I can give you a, <laughs> a different angle answer to that question. The cost for batteries and shoes and boots and pocket knives and all that shit for people that get paid is also pretty high in a service industry where you're active and you're, it was law enforcement or fire or whatever. I was in the middle. I've said it before on the podcast. I don't know the percentage, but I'm sure it's over 50%. When I was in the military, more than 50% of the gear that I brought on operations with me was self-bought through the civilian market, not like not GI issued. Right. And most of my teammates were the same way. So it's... I, okay. Well, that, that brings up another question. Uh -huh. Issue or purchase? What do you mean issue or purchase? Um, like say for a flashlight. Mm -hmm. Do you oh take okay you get issued or do you That's say good... ah no you know what keep that I'm gonna buy something better That's a good question um, I'm sure that's a varied the answer is varied depending on the item and the agency and all that stuff So I'll give you a couple examples I'll kind of be general too if I can um, <clears throat> If I can get something issued of course I'll take it and uh, at least I'll put it in a box at home to turn it in at the end of my contract or my gear or my, you know, my enlistment or my unit stay or whatever it is. So if they're going to give it to me, I take it. I can try it. If I don't like it, I can put it in a box. If I want to keep it unopened so that when I leave that unit or job or whatever, I can turn it right back in brand new. That's great. Um, the, the first thing that came to my mind when you asked me that was the people that say, I want to defend myself and I want, to, oh, oh, this is a common in law enforcement too. This is real common in law enforcement where they say the agency gives me a rifle. I also have a rifle at home that I really like. And they say, I'm just going to use my shitty agency rifle if I have to shoot somebody on the street. And no, I don't mean fucking murder. I mean, if you get an officer involved shooting and you make a righteous, legal, moral, justifiable shoot, Officer, you know, your weapon is taken as evidence and it's taken for a long time, often several years, like maybe a decade or so. So a lot of officers will say this quote that's very common to hear this. They say, well, if they're going to take my rifle away from me after a shooting, I don't want it to be a rifle that, I, that I'm attached to. So my comment is always, wait a second, the chances of you shooting someone are pretty slim. 
And if you do shoot someone, I'm sure that some of your fucking buddies will even pitch in after your. Sh- it's going to be a miserable fucking experience getting investigated after an officer involved shooting. I'm sure that like you'll be more than happy to be alive. I'm sure that you'll be more than happy to have a, a rifle in your hands that you're comfortable with. And if it gets damaged or if it gets taken, at least you were proficient and comfortable with that weapon system. So that's kind of my flashlight answer. If they give me a flashlight, yeah, I might try it. But if it's bulky or if it doesn't fit, I'll throw it in a box at home and I'll buy one that I like. So it's not cool. an, it's not a 100% answer and it's specific to each item. Um, and then there's policy issues too. And I always used to tell people, it's up to you which policy you break. I preferred to break all the policies that help boost my officer safety, whether it's in the military and law enforcement or even as, as a civilian. If I'm going to break a policy or a rule or a law or a procedure or whatever, if that helps me stay alive better, I often, not always, I often choose to break that policy so that I can stay alive and I'll deal with the other bullshit later. So like, okay, uh, your shoes must be shined. Okay. Have you ever tried jumping a fence and running through the grass in dress shoes? Like it's kind of not the best option. Okay. Well, I'm going to get some lightweight, breathable, good grip, tactical boots that you can't shine. And if I get in trouble, I'll deal with that later. So the same thing with flashlights. Yeah. The right color. (laughs) Yeah. That's kind of hard to get away with. Use a Sharpie on the, on the Nike swoosh. A lot of people nice. do that. So, um, flashlight. Um, the stuff that you generally get issued. God, man. Well, even... back back to what you said about rifle, though. Right? Uh-huh. You have, um, and I've actually been thinking about, you know, the gun thing a lot because of some uh, back and forth we had with Mark One last night, um, which that's going to be in a different episode. But you 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 talked about somebody saying, oh. You know, I was issued this shitty rifle, and you know, I have this awesome rifle yeah. at home. Okay, are you are you are you being issued a Colt AR-15? You know, are are you being issued um, a Smith and Wesson AR-15? Right? Um, do you have like a, a Tavor or a fucking Stair Aug or some fucking bullshit? You know, like some some kind of exotic rifle? at home that you much prefer well yeah most nine times out of ten most people are going to prefer that freaking super badass you know like tried like those those guns were built out of necessity right and yeah they're going to be better than your you know like a2 you know like your your patrolman's carbine ar-15 they're just going to be better but i mean if if you're talking about going from a freaking Ferrari to a Kia. I mean, yeah, I'm going to throw the Kia down too. But <laughs> if you're talking about going from a cousin built AR to another, get out of here. Yeah. Um, I, I even, this is, this, this was part of the job that I didn't like. It was sometimes a hassle. Not always, but like it was sometimes a hassle to be like, Hey, can I get some batteries for my flashlight? And depending on how your personality is and depending on your relationship with your supervisor and depending on the supervisor, sometimes, you know, if they're sticklers, they might be like, here, here's one battery. And you're like, Hey, uh, the flashlight takes two. It's a issued flashlight. Like I need the batteries to do my job. And they're like, fine, here's two. And then you're like, well, what if I'm on a call and my flashlight dies, it would be nice to have flashlights in my glove box. Like, depending on your supervisor, like, if they're going to give you a fucking hard time about that, I often say, like, some people have the personality where they're like, no, I'm going to fight for that. I'm going to get my fucking batteries. I'm going to state my case. I'm going to file a complaint, and I'm going to get extra batteries and put them in my glove box if I need them. That's great. Some people Why don't have that. you need more than one flashlight? <laughs> don't start, Joe. <laughs> don't start with me. So, some people... If you don't, if you don't want to deal with that bullshit, you say, fuck it. I'll buy my own fucking batteries. Just leave me alone. I just want to do my job. So I was that guy where I said, okay, I'll buy. I'm not asking for no damn batteries. So there ain't no, there ain't no damn way. I'm not, I'm not going to go up to someone. Could you give me some better? If... Yeah. Really? You have to beg and plead and they have the key to the cabinet. Cause you can't be trusted to get your own batteries. Yeah, I know it sucks. It's a bureaucracy. A fucking negative. I got my own key to the cabinet. 
Ah, well, so do I. Fuck to every here. cabinet, I get it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's policy issues, there's personal preference issues, there's personality issues, there's whether you want to break the policy or not. Uh, let's talk about flashlights too. Most of the shit they're going to give you is either those big ugly D cells or mass produced, mass purchased stuff off of Gauls, like the generic bestseller. I have some. I carry some bad ass flashlights out there that were like 700 plus lumens that light up the city. And I was I was so con- like you can get the job kind of done with the shit that you get at work. But I, I just never understood how there were other officers out there like. Oh, yeah, it's just the one they gave me. It's not very bright and, you know, doesn't work great, but eh, I'm not going to. Like, I, I always saw myself as doing my job with a purpose and a passion to the best of my ability. Like, when you raise your hand and you swear to defend and uphold the Constitution, yada, 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 right, and perform my responsible tasks with the whatever the phrasing is, to the best of your ability, so help me. I like that best of my ability part. So I was like, I want the best fucking lighting I can get. I want the best holster I can get. I want the best handcuffs I can get. So like I took that, like that meant something. I internalized that. A lot of people, you know, cops are just like people. Military people are just like people. You have a full spectrum. You have lazy people. You have I'll just get the job done people. You have hard workers. You have smart workers. You have idiots. You have thieves. You have murderers. You have everything it's a full spectrum just because you go through a background check does not make you a good person and just because you swear to do your job to the best of your ability doesn't mean you're going to do your job to the best of your ability or your ability might suck so did hey sorry trigger warning on that did i what did you give a trigger warning on that yeah sorry if i trigger you write me an email if you can find the fucking button on the homepage. idiots Dude, I'm so happy. Let's, Dude, because, so you, happy. because you keep harping on flashlights, uh-huh. I've got a flashlight I use around here, um, around the farm and stuff, that is, dude, it's ridiculous. It's a Coleman Illuminlast. Okay. And when I, it, so it's it's got a double stage switch, so I can, you know, all the way forward is off or on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Halfway is dim, you know, and then all the way back or whatever is off dude when i hit that thing to the full setting that flashlight is brighter than the headlights on my car mm-hmm. my high beams and i think it takes double a's it's ridiculous it takes like six double a's i know that's great isn't it so i'm not i'm not gonna beg for double a's i'll buy the damn things i'll buy the damn flashlight myself and it'll put any shit y'all are giving away to shame, you know, like you can issue that shit all day long. I'm whatever. That's going to be a spare in the glove box. Why well, you need more than one flashlight? I did. I always carried more than one flashlight. I also carried um, more than one set of batteries for every flashlight I had. And I didn't carry them on my mm-hmm. person, but I carried them in my vehicle. Mm-hmm. Cause the nice thing about driving a patrol car is you got a big ass trunk. Um, oh, they just shit. If you ask for like, a set of 18650s. We use the CR123s for a lot of our shit. I mean, it's, oh, I hate it's, fucking CR123s. I know, they're expensive. Um, but they're so oh, common dude, and so many different we things. Started. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I have a case of CR123s for my night vision scope. Um, find the review on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, I just. It goes through so many CR one two threes, and there's not a real good alternative. I, I hate CR one two threes. FYI, anybody listening, if you have something that takes two CR one two threes, and shout out to Jack because I know he's covered this before. If you have something that takes two CR one two threes, just buy an eighteen six fifty rechargeable battery off of Amazon. It doesn't matter which damn one you pick. Buy an eighteen six fifty battery. I like that. Off of Amazon. I like that. No, I'm gonna try that. Because I've been looking for or, a rechargeable battery, and for if you CR need a local source, if you need a local source for an eighteen six six fifty, hit any freaking vape shop in your town. Ah, cool. Let's uh, let's touch back on volunteer agencies in a hiring process, or once you're hired, um, let's just make sure we're staying on topic. I like these Roger. rants. These rants do happen. I'm the rant king, but uh, 
volunteer agency. So someone just said, expect to buy your own uniforms and equipment, but if you find a, uh, a volunteer agency that will supply them, then that's awesome. Yes, do your research. Um, and also, if you're going to join a volunteer agency, if you're going to join any bureaucracy and you're going to go through a hiring process where you may or may not get hired, be aware that if you want to volunteer, you can volunteer somewhere. Just don't don't let your path end if it's in your own hometown and they say, sorry, we're full. Go somewhere else and do it and just get your foot in the door and get the experience. So a lot of times with bureaucracies and agencies like that, you might not get hired or accepted in the first place that you apply, but you should definitely venture out and go somewhere to pursue your passion, even if it's not in a specific geographic place that you're interested in. That's very common for law enforcement. Almost fucking 90 plus percent of the people I've ever met in my life in law enforcement didn't get hired at their first, their first pick. I can talk to um, living in a different geographical region than where I work. As and somebody who has a two hour commute. Yeah, I can talk about that. And there's pros and cons to that too. Both ways. There is. Uh, I think that's another show, though, when I when I pause and think about it. Yeah. Um, I'm actually pretty happy that we touched on that one. Um, I know we've Are we covered... Are we leaving anybody out? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I can tell you, I, th- I know on Liberty Mastermind and maybe even on Uncensored Tactical, we've talked about Jack's volunteer experiences before um, quite a bit. So he wasn't able to join us tonight, but uh, I'm really thankful for all the input you gave, Joe, because the topic of volunteer agencies is not my forte, but bureaucracies and agencies are definitely my forte. Roger that. And I'm, I'm going to take a minute to apologize if you guys are hearing the ambient background on my end of the line. Um, I'm recording from my kitchen table, so hashtag real people. I love it. It's not I in my ears. It's not that bad. So hopefully, on the, I think on the recording, it won't be bad either. But I'm uh I'm pretty happy to kind of wrap this one up here shortly. You good? I'm good. Um, people on the thread, do y'all have any more questions, comments, suggestions? If we do, I'll handle them at the end of this. But I'll start my do, bow tie process. Do do. do. Do, do, the do. best way that you can support us is give us a like and a subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you're listening on and to, to subscribe on our webpage at libertymastermindpodcast.com you can always contact us via the contact form on the website um, you can follow me Pat at on Instagram it'll be at uncensored tactical um, oh dude dis- yeah what's up that reminds me. Yes. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Do Texas it. Joe has an Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you degenerates. No, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Um, listeners, y'all can reach out to me at... Oh, crap. Hold on a second. Oh, damn it, Bobby. TX underscore anonymous underscore Joe on Instagram. Awesome. So we got Rescue Jack. We got me. We got you. I don't think Ox is on Instagram yet. Whose dog is this? Oh, Ox. <laughs> um, what else haven't I covered yet? Discord is our biggest project. We're actually interacting live with our audience right now on Discord. That's where a lot of our, our feedback and our questions come from during our live recordings. <laughs> Um, Null, are you stalking me? Awesome, yeah. Null, Null Overflow is actually on my Instagram as well. We're pretty active there. So you can download the Discord app on your phone or on your website. And everyone that I've talked to so far, um, maybe not everyone that's on the app, but the people that I've spoken to about getting signed on, uh, it's a little tricky signing on and finding your finding your way around the app. It's a little bit different than most communication apps. But once you're on, it's I, I like the platform a lot. I really do. Uh, there You have to get our link. We will 
post it on the article today at libertymastermindpodcast.com. I'll also make sure it's in the contact on libertymastermindpodcast.com on our contact us page. So click that link and that'll bring uh, that'll bring you to our Discord server. Wow, that's a long-winded outro. Um, thanks so much for spending time with us. It means a lot. You should also share this with your friends that you think might find some value in today's show. And if you want to be a guest, fill out the guest contact form on libertymastermindpodcast.com. And anything else, questions, comments, concerns, feedback, just hit us up on a contact form. Thanks again so much. See you next time.